A great research poster is one that attracts attention for all the right reasons. Mm. To really understand what all the right reasons are, you need to understand what happens when you go to a poster session at a conference or in your university. Now, what you think it's going to be like is that you're going to stand next to your poster with it there and you're going to be asked questions. But in reality, people are wandering around aimlessly because it's the poster session. And it's kind of a bit awkward, if I'm going to be completely honest, because people are walking by and you're like, would you like to look at my poster that I spent ages kind of preparing and then they just walk on by or they come up to you they ignore the poster altogether and they say can you tell me about this and then you're like well yeah like it's on the it's on the poster that's, what, that's why I did the poster but I get it they want a shortcut and what you've got to do is help shortcut for them by making your poster awesome. And here are all the things that your poster needs to have and be for it to be that shortcut so that they're not just like bombarded with information and they put it in the too hard basket and walk on. Okay, the first thing that a great poster has is an obvious flow. As in, you've got little boxes, which is like, this is where you need to go first. This is where you need to go second. Don't overcomplicate things. Stick with either like a column structure, just something very, very simple. And the next biggest mistake that I see loads of students make all the time is by cramming it full of words. People aren't interested in words on your poster. It should be based on figures, really obvious, nicely prepared figures, graphs, schematics, with a little bit of text explaining what they should get from that graph, text, or schematic. Now, here's the thing, is that whenever I create my own research posters in the past, I always had to go back and remove words. Go back and remove words. That is the only way that you can really cut down. Even when you think you have cut down enough, carry on cutting down the words on your poster until you have reached the bare bones. Be ruthless and cut it away. Another thing that makes sort of like a, a poster very attractive and nice to kind of approach is the fact that you can kind of read the title and understand the conclusions very quickly. Like like having those two things bolded, and we'll get on to kind of like a better poster design later on that was proposed a few years ago that I haven't really seen taken off. Anyway, we'll get there. But when you approach a poster, the title, as in like, read this if you're interested in this, and don't go crazy with fancy words. No one's interested in your fancy words. They are drinking and they're walking past your poster. So they just need to be able to glance and go, oh yeah, that's what that's about. Don't try to impress anyone. If you're trying to impress someone, you're in the wrong spot. Keep it simple, simple words. The way I like to check if words are simple is go on speech to text on Google and say your title. If it's not able to pick up your title from you saying it, it's too complicated. There's a little trick for you. Now, color. People go crazy with color, but don't overdo it. You should have maybe three colors on your poster. Now, if you're not designy and I'm not designy, I don't really know what design is to be honest, but I know this. If I wanna shortcut the colors I use, I just use an online tool like Coolers. So here we are. All you have to do is go to their tools and palette generator and then you just click the space bar until you find one that you like. No, don't like that. No, don't, oh, this one could be okay. There's your accent color, nice and bright. These ones could be your background color or vice versa, done. No, too close. Oh, another accent color, too close. Here we are, here's a nice one. These could be your background colors, this could be your accent color. There are tons and tons of colors that you can choose from. Coolers is one way to shortcut the design thinking. Another thing you shouldn't do is really rely on the template that's given to you by your university. A lot of universities, they're in university mode. They're not thinking about you communicating your research really well. They are thinking about, how can I get my logo on everything in this conference. So they're more interested in having their colors, their brand colors and their logo up at the top. Now, if you're forced to use it, sure, you have to. But remember the normal sort of like uh, rules of not too much text, um, mainly using graphs, figures, schematics, that is important. But if you can, just do away with it altogether. Put their logo at the top, you know, of your poster. Make sure that, uh, you do try to get away from the university supplied one because in my experience, 
they're always a bit rubbish. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, and more. It's exclusive content only available for free on that newsletter, so go sign up now. All right, let's head over and have a look to see at some of these research posters. I have Googled research poster, and this is essentially the quintessential view that people get during a research poster session. You can see that it's just crammed full of information, information, words, words, so much word. Oh my God, it's overwhelming. I am not interested in approaching many of these, but you can use this kind of view as a way of kind of being like, well, what really does work? Well, as you're scanning through, this one stands out. Why? Because it is mainly figures. It is mainly uh, graphs and nice colors. There's an obvious flow. I can read text. I can look at stuff. I like it. This one stands out. That's pretty good. Why? Simple colors. There's nice figures. Maybe a little bit too wordy. This one looks absolutely terrible. And that's because look at the words. You should be able to read a poster by standing, you know, five feet away from the poster. This one, you have got no chance of really understanding what is going on. Once again here, the researcher has been over enthusiastic. Look at this, look how much stuff is here. We have got pie graphs, we've got background methodology, population, there's so much going on. Once again, the rule, go in, cut, cut, and cut again. If you cannot cut out you know, from this and you are telling too much of a complicated story, I think that some of the best poster designs at the moment online are shown to you by animateyour.science. And here's an example. This is from their blog, how to design an award-winning conference poster. And you can see they go through everything above, but ultimately this is fantastic. There's three areas. Areas. There's very little kind of text, but there's a lot of data. There's one nice large eye grabbing visual that kind of like draws you in. I would be drawn to this poster if I was walking by because it's not overwhelming for the drunk uh, academic that's walking by with their, with their glass. No, it's nice, it's simple, um, it's good colors, it's not crazy, and I really think that if you want to know more about how to design a really good poster, go check out animateyour.science and their blog section to find out how you can make a great poster. They have covered everything you need to know. In about 2019, there was this proposal, this proposal that we should change the poster style completely. And it caught on just for a little bit. I haven't seen it much afterwards, but I really think we can learn a lot from this better poster idea. It was first proposed by this guy called Mike Morrison. Look how happy his little face is to be like, hey everyone, I'm changing things and I don't care. I think this was fantastic. Look at this. This poster was brilliant. It's got the massive communication bit, like this is what you should be able to find out. And then underneath it's got a QR code for more information, and then it's got very sparse information on the side. Now, I think, that he was really, really onto something. And I want to see poster designs go closer to this than anything that we've seen in the past. So overall, Mike Morrison, you did a fantastic job. I'm sorry it didn't take off, but hopefully we can get closer to your vision with your happy little face as well. Here's another layout where you've got all of the important information in the beginning, uh, right in the middle, obvious, and then just the information along the sides, which means that if you're walking by with your little drunk academic friend, they can sort of like quickly look at it and go, oh yeah, that's interesting. I'll maybe grab a shot of that QR code, boom. QR codes weren't such a big thing pre-COVID, but now people are used to scanning QR codes. I think using one on your poster could really, really help and extra figures and table here. But the problem that people do, and this is what we always, we ruin it for ourselves, us scientists, because look, that was the idea. And then look what happened. Look what they did to his beautiful idea. They've destroyed it with what scientists and researchers love the most, which is too many words on the page. Look at this, look. And also, look, if I'm not being, I'm not able to scan this on the way through, Autistic young adults had fewer examination passes, employment roles, and less clear plans for the future, blah, blah. Okay, okay, 
I have to, I have to really try. Try to cut that down. Cut that down to like a simple sentence and then you would have done perfectly well. I do think that they've tried their best to kind of uh, follow the, the outline of the better poster idea and then their supervisor's probably gone in and been like, oh, needs more words, needs more words. Definitely needs more words, put more words in. Make the title and conclusions really, really confusing. That is a good science poster. No, it's not, professor, it's not. So there we have it. There's everything you need to know about creating a perfect research poster and the pitfalls that I think a lot of researchers find themselves falling into. Let me know in the comments what you would add to that. And also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my no new project where I've got my ebook, the ultimate academic writing toolkit, as well as the PhD survival guide where they're available for a bundle price at the moment. And I'll see you in the next video.